I chose a feather as my initial project here to give everyone an idea of a, a good basic carving. It doesn't require a whole lot. I've doodled it onto a small bit of basswood here. And to carve it out, I'm going to be using this number 18 pattern medium stockman has a peach seed jig amber bone handle and i do want to take a quick moment to thank case for sending this knife to use in the making of this video remember to have your knife well sharpened and well honed to do the job it needs to do if you're cutting and as we get into this i'll demonstrate if it comes up but if you find yourself having to push harder than you'd like or harder than you would think you'd need to, I'd stop pushing. Am I going at this the wrong angle? Or is my tool not sharp enough to do the job it needs to? So make sure you're using a well sharp and well honed tool. And for this carving, which will be the same with all carvings. It's a matter of once you have your layout, then we move into our rough out. And our rough out is removing all this material here that isn't part of the feather. That's our initial rough out, these four sections. You don't have to start by pulling straight along you can taper it on both sides to work it down. And you're just slowly working it back. All I'm doing is curling my hand. Using my thumb to help draw it towards me. And yes, I am cutting towards myself. And because we're coming across like this, it's hard to see we're getting close to that line. So what you can do is turn the carving around using your thumb as a fulcrum and a pivot point here to push down and through We just keep working it until we're comfortable with how close it is. Going to the top end. And when I'm pushing through this way, I'm not having to turn my hand with the knife. I'm actually turning the other hand that's holding the piece. And I'm pulling it into it, just letting it take little bit by little bit. Now, for the moment, I'm going to leave this bit right here. And it's to give me support as we're working on the center here. And to help establish that, we're going to switch over to sheep's foot here and the reason being is it comes down to this point and that point will help us do so taking the knife almost well just like a pen or a pencil following that center line just to the outside of it we're scoring down the length of our feather creating a stop cut and we'll do it to the opposite side as well and just following it down I need to do some more roughing out right in here 
get us up to that. There we go. Now, if I tried to push on through this, I would break through the base of this feather. So I don't want to do that. Instead, I'll turn around and come right back in on it. We switch over to a blade that has a rounded end. We can just come in and work our way down the center up to that stop cut. And this will also, here we are, get the same end result. Now, if you've made these cuts and it doesn't just flip away, all you have to do, just come back over that first initial score line. There we are. We'll come into the other side of the shaft here and repeat that. just up to where that stop cut is. Oftentimes you can hear it. Again, it didn't want to come right out, so. Just run that stop cut right back through there again. Out it pops. And we're wanting to relief out the center shaft portion before we start rounding the outside because we want it to be standing just slightly up and above. Remember, slow is steady and steady is fast. We're not trying to create a feather in three cuts. We're just trying to carve a feather. If you find yourself getting frustrated or wanting to try to rush, slow down, because that is a sure fire way to end up needing stitches. But now that we've got the basic rough out, we can go in and start rounding and tapering. Do this, you just use whichever blade you feel most comfortable with. And notice how I'm really choked up on this. I don't have the blade way out here trying to pull it in. I prefer more control, and to have that, I just choke up on the blade. And I'm not taking the whole area here. I'm only just starting to round and give shape to the outer edge. Working my way in. You can see here from the side. It's only just been rounded. Then I'll work back the other way, just doing the same thing. You cut whichever way is more comfortable for you. Sometimes cutting towards you is 
gonna give you what you need. Other times you're gonna work away from what you're carving. What you're looking for as you're shaving this down, you're working towards the center shaft and we're just being careful to go right below it. Just take your time with it. Now with a well sharpened and a well honed knife you can do this with hardwoods as well. I'm just demonstrating this with basswood. So the question is going to become whether or not we're going to want to carve the back side. And the answer is going to be well, it depends on what you want to do with this. If you're going to Put a magnet to the back of it so you can stick it to something? No. But if you're wanting to further challenge yourself and thin out the backside, absolutely. You're going to need to tackle it. And the best way to tackle it will be taking advantage of this rounded end here and just doing a slice and cut across. Just letting the rounded portion cut in. There we go. Some pieces need sanding. Some don't. You decide which ones do. And sometimes tool marks add more character to a carving. And please note, I'm not trying to take big bites. I'm just taking small curls. I'm just slowly pushing this feather to a place where I don't want to give it away. I want it to be kept in my own personal collection. If when you finish a carving, you're at a point to where you're having a hard time deciding if you really want it to, to be given as a gift because you really like it yourself, consider that success. Because if you like it well enough to where you want to keep it for yourself, then that's definitely something someone will appreciate if they receive it as a gift. On the back side again, just putting that internal curve. And it's achieved with small shavings, can't be done with big bites. Now, not gonna lie, sandpaper will really help removing the sink right now, but I think if we can do it without having to use that, it'd be even better. And just realize that if I come at the shaft from this angle, just taking little shavings, it's doing two things for me. We are removing that ink and we're rounding it over giving the shape that we need. There we go. So we're killing two birds with one stone here. Just taking that right up through here. The end result doesn't have to be as thin as a feather. But you are wanting to give the impression 
that it's that thin. And you achieve that by closing in the sides here. When you start, you've got all of this material. What you're doing, you're removing it from the top and then you can come in and remove some from the bottom until you're just left with the thin section. Tapering down to just that thin section is what's going to give the impression that it's thinner. Right now, That is the area that still shows to be flat. And on this side, this is still the area. And we've got some right here as well. Now we don't have to put that curve into it when we're carving out the back. If it's a carving that we're just going to see from the front side, then it's simply a matter of tapering this down and angling it back. So from the forward view, it's still going to go down to that point. So just angling it back trimming it you can achieve the goal of thinness coming back to this side just dangling back This is also a point where you can add some more character to it because it doesn't have to be perfectly even or straight when it's done. If there's a slight curve or a wave in it, that gives character, gives it some personality, helps to make it unique. If we look a little closer here, when we started, we scored down either side of the shaft of the feather. And by thinning out the material to the left and to the right of it, now that portion stands out just slightly. See that slight shadow you get there? It's not too prominent. And then when we came in and cleaned it up, that rounded off the shaft for the most part. And we don't have a whole lot of tear here, which is also good. Now tear, when you're first starting, and even after you've been carving, it happens. But you learn how to clean it up. That comes with practice. So that's how you fix a tear, practice. Knowing how the grain is flowing with each piece. So I think we could call this, for the most part, done. We've got the, our basic feather. We've rounded off our quill, trimmed it down to where it matches up with the size of the feather. And the only question is, are we done? And you could say yes. From here you can paint. You can stain, you can add more detail. If you wanna add more detail, let's say we put a small break in the vein. 
we'll treat that the exact same way that we did with the shaft of the feather itself. We're gonna make two cuts, just letting the tip of that sheep's foot cut in. And it doesn't have to go all the way through the feather. So I'm going back and forth, scoring down again and again, just letting the blade travel as deep as it can. So we have two stop cuts here. One to the left, one to the right, and you'll just gently push in. And then you come to the other side. I'm just pivoting with my thumb here. Not pushing hard, letting the blade do the work. Now we have enough of it established to where I can tell that if I just come in and follow that line back, I can meet my earlier cuts. And we've notched out this portion. Something I'll notice right off the bat though is if I look in, I can see how thick this is. And that's defeating what we're trying to accomplish with it looking like a feather. So the remedy will be coming in on either side and trimming back. Nice little curls. Check your work. Couple more cuts. I know the grain is coming, or it's flowing along the feather like this. So, in order for the blade to cut the cleanest, going with the grain, it wouldn't work if I went out. If I went out on this side, it would tear out or break off this entire section. Just like if I came at this side that way, it's not gonna cut as cleanly and it's not gonna give us what we want. See, no curls and it's cutting in. Well, it's falling into the grain. It's going with the path of least resistance. So again, the remedy, taking advantage of the grain. Just barely curling your hand. You're just letting that blade roll through. Until you're at a point when you look at it from the top side, it's as thin as you want it to be. And it's something you can practice with. Challenge yourself to see just how thin you can take it. Now I've been accomplishing this portion with the sheep's foot, but you can also switch over and let that rounded tip come in there and remove material. And to have the whole feather match up, instead of just having those two divots there, I'm going to taper it out By doing that, it just makes it more uniform, more pleasing to the eye.
And if we look back now, still not perfectly feather thin, but it does have a nicer flow to it. That's one way to add character. Another way, coming back to our sheep's foot, letting this point do the majority of the work. No real pressure here. You just let that point touch in and pull straight back. Placing it right next to it and working your way down the feather. We'll go to the shorter side to make it a little bit faster here. And you're just barely letting the edge of that blade create the effect of the vein. And they don't have to be perfectly evenly spaced. The blade can fall back into a previous cut. It's not gonna hurt it. But you're just moving it up little by little. Working your way down the length. Another way to do this where you'll oil it first, then come back and do the scoring and oil it again. And thinking since this is basswood, it'll work just oiling after. But the effect is so the oil flows into these cuts and it makes them pop stand out more. That linseed oil. Should be able to see how it's flowing into those cuts. Gently taking your finger, running it over, up it down in there. Now, if you were going to paint this, I would recommend taking some acrylics or inks watered down and slowly adding color to build it up to where you'd like, but. Even after that, adding some oil to it just gives it a little bit of sheen. And that's a basic feather. With a well sharpened and a well honed blade, you can do this with more than just basswood. Here's an example in cherry wood. Here's another example in basswood. We look at an example in maple. And most feathers, when I carve them, they're rescues from what would be called a scrap pile in most shops. In mine, I don't have scrap wood. Everything has potential. This is a piece of apple wood. Another example in apple. So there are no shortage of options when carving a feather. You can make it as simple or as elaborate as you want. It's entirely up to you. Just have fun with it. Sometimes the wood grain is going to tell you how the feather wants to go. I recommend not fighting it. See where the wood takes you first. If all else fails, sand it out.
but you could have done each of these just as easily with this case pocket knife, which served itself very well during this demonstration. So I want to say thanks again to Case Knives for providing this knife. And if you haven't already checked it out, there's a corresponding article on the Case website. Links are in the description. Please go over there and have a look at that. With all that being said, thanks for watching. If I've earned it, please subscribe, hit like on the video, and take good care.